appeared to the three shepherds on May 13th, 1917, completely to their surprise and wonderment as to who this beautiful lady was. And at the end of six apparitions on the 13th of each month, with the exception of August, when they were imprisoned by the anti-Catholic legal authorities uh, to prevent them from going to the Kova, uh, at the end of that period, she said who she was, that she was from heaven. Uh, she had said that initially, but without giving her name, that she is the Lady of the Rosary. And she had come, of course, as she revealed during the six addresses that she gave to uh, the children. She had come to ask for prayers, for peace, and reparation for sin. And she promised that at the end of these this period, she would perform a miracle so that people might believe, and that indeed happened on the 13th of October. And in that miracle, the sun was seen to descend down close to the earth. Many feared the end of the world, but about 70,000 people, both in Fatima, at some distance from Fatima, saw this great solar miracle, this miracle of the sun, as it's called, and believed even atheists and socialists and others who were actively fighting against the church uh, in those days. And so we come to commemorate that and we can come also to pray for the world in the midst of its current troubles in the Ukraine between uh, mainland China and Taiwan uh, and other places in the world which are in great need in Venezuela we can think of where persecution or war or famine or drug cartels or all kinds of miseries beset the poor who only wish to live their lives before God with decency and dignity and that's deprived of them by these situations and the mother has come to relieve them of that and to get the world to pray for that and so we should. hymn which in its many strophes recounts the apparition itself. We also see the many banners which are so common there of parishes and dioceses and Catholic organizations and uh, military groups and others who, who come on pilgrimage and substantial numbers and even camp out overnight in the cover in the surrounding uh, park area or stay in caravans, we would say RVs, uh, in this country and they do that in order to be present at this great celebration today. Last night at the rosary and candlelight procession, I believe they said that there were around 150 pilgrim groups, uh, which including some from the U.S., but they listed countries from all over the world, Asia, Europe, Africa, so really attracting large numbers of pilgrims. And it's such a relief to see COVID over and to have these kinds of numbers. They returned partially last year, but uh, this is really beautiful to see and reminiscent of my own time in Portugal where you would see these huge crowds um, Come on pilgrimage. This is what Our Lady always asks in her apparitions, really, and uh, they do.
Bella, we noted last night how uh, tomorrow in the United States, and I think in some other countries as well, is Mother's Day. And uh, what a beautiful day on which to celebrate Mother's Day, celebrating the greatest of mothers, the holiest of mothers here in Fatima on the day before. Another coincidence which is worth noting, and that is today is the traditional feast day of Our Lady of China, uh, commemorating an apparition uh, in 19, the year 1900 in a little town near Beijing, Donglu, during the middle of the Boxer Rebellion, which was uh, an attack of peasants and other government forces against foreigners, against uh, Christian missionaries. And this little village of a thousand had 700 Christians, I believe predominantly Catholic. And so the rebels attacked and uh, a woman appeared in the sky and a man appeared on the horse and routed uh, the rebels, the soldiers, the attackers, and they dispersed. And it was learned that the, the priest, uh, a native uh, Chinese, Father Wu had been praying for the help of Our Lady during the course of this attack. And she had appeared. And so they had an image made, uh, Father Wu had this image made, uh, but how, how to make, how to do such an image. So he got a picture of the Empress in her fine imperial clothing seated on a, on a, a, a great worthy chair for such a person. And he had a painter use that as a model with the faces of Jesus and Mary. And this is the image of Our Lady of China. And it's important because the times were very similar to those, uh, those in which she appeared here in Fatima in terms of the, the, the people, the suffering of people in the world. And so as the Chinese this weekend, Chinese Catholics celebrate Our Lady of China. Uh, the formal feast is tomorrow on the second Sunday of May. But today is the traditional feast, and a great coincidence that is. So we should pray for, for the people in China, for the Catholics and other Christians in China who find themselves not free, but not completely free or really free uh, to worship God and love the Lord uh, as is their right. So we can join our prayers today for them. Maria manifestou-se neste lugar, trazendo o conforto, a graça e a misericórdia de Deus para a Mary manifested herself in this place, bringing grace and comfort to humanity and explaining the tools that to bring peace to humanity. And then the children were able to communicate to us this. So we're here in this procession to imitate Mary and her announcement. Também nós, após o encontro espiritual com Jesus e com a Mãe do Céu, us as well after meeting with Mary and Jesus, we can bring this light and this grace that we receive to others. So we need to let, let ourselves envelop in the cloak of Our Lady, of Our Mother, who communicates with us the graces of Her Son. 
So now we will sing another hymn called Ave o Teotokos. And the Teotokos is the term used by the Council of Ephesus in 431 to refute the errors which suggested that somehow the nature, human and uh, divine nature were not united in Christ. And one way to do that was to say that the mother of Christ is the mother of God because the person of Christ, the only person in Christ is God. It's not two persons with two, two different natures, but one person united, two natures united in the one person, of the second person of the Trinity. And so they said, Mary is the God bearer. And this had been attacked as a as a as a term that had been used for over a hundred years and longer, uh, and but now it's used was used by the church since 431, Mother of God, to refute the error that in Christ there is more than one person. He is God who became man for our salvation. center of the esplanade you see and we'll get a closer shot I think as the procession proceeds the, the pillar with the statue of the Sacred Heart on top because in the end Christ is at the center of all that Mary was about and all of what the church is about and all of what we are about and we don't think of her independent of he whom she gave birth to the reason that we respect her and honor her and give her the veneration that is due injustice to her. So in the middle is Christ, and this is how it always has been for the church in its understanding of the role of Our Lady and the titles and honors given to her. Flowing, as I said, from Ephesus, that Christ is God and man. The person is God who became man, the second person of the Trinity. What we're seeing here is also there was the cross of World Youth Day and also the icon of Our Lady Salus Populi Romani, which is an icon of Our Lady, which uh, is also an imp one of the icons along with the cross that has been doing a pilgrimage throughout Europe and has been leading this procession. And so they've been doing a pilgrimage throughout um, throughout Portugal, sorry, um, since November 2021. And then obviously in August, they will be in Lisbon for when the World Youth, Youth Day happens. And so here you can see both of the icons side by side with the World Youth Day logo um, underneath. And these icons have traveled all throughout the world, following young people across the world. Um, the cross has been to five five continents and almost 90 countries. It's been carried by foot, by boat. Um, it has been in interesting places such as it traveled to Ground Zero in New York after 9-11. And so there are icons that bring hope across the world to, to young people and, and Catholics everywhere. And as you noted, that's, that's an icon uh, that is very familiar to the Romans because it was an image that is attested to uh, St. Luke. There are a number of these black Madonnas, uh, such as in Chestahova and, and Talos Populi Romana, that are 
a test had to have been uh, drawn by St. Luke of the very image of Our Lady. And this was carried by Pope Gregory I when there was a plague in Rome and he uh, carried it around through the city and back across the Tiber towards the Vatican. And he, I believe this, uh, the story is that he saw as they crossed the, what is now called the Bridge of the Angels, the Archangel Michael sheathing his sword that uh, the suffering of Rome would be coming to an end and it did. And since then she has been called the salvation of Rome uh, in this sense uh, with that understanding. So this is a, a beautiful image that is, uh, the original is kept in uh, the church, St. Mary Majors in Rome, which is the, the church building of the highest rank uh, dedicated to the Blessed Virgin. In this sanctuary today, we're celebrating the solemnity of Our Lady of Fatima. Now he's asking people to, to stand and to sing and to invoke peace and grace and divine mercy brought about by, by Our Lady in this divine place and to, to trust in Our Ladies. So now they will sing exactly the, the hymn that's called uh, Grace and, and Mercy. Let's go confidently.
hear their singing, so let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy from the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pax Vobis Muy estimados peregrinos de habla hispana el Señor esté con vosotros Now the again uh, the person presiding is Cardinal Pietro Parolin who's the Vatican Secretary of State and he will be greeting the the different pilgrims in the different languages the Lord be with you. Cher pèlerin de langue française, le Seigneur soit avec vous. Liebe Pilger deutscher Sprache, der Herr sei mit euch. Drodzy pielgrzymi z Polski, Pan z wami. Dragi hodočastici hrvatskog jezika, gospodin s vama. Dragi romari iz Slovenije, gospod s vami. Saudo todos os peregrinos de lingua portuguesa. O senhor esteja con vosco. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Confessemos os nossos pecados. Confesso a Deus. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, every virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Now they're singing Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, which is Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy.
in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, grant us that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world. We may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ who lives and, reigns with, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Leitura do Apocalipse de São João. From the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband como noiva adornada para o seu esposo. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will always be with them. 
He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Disse então aquele que estava sentado no trono, vou renovar todas as coisas. Palavra do Senhor. The word of the Lord. So now they will sing the responsorial and the refrain is, you are the honor, honor of our race. Blessed are you, daughter, by the Most High God, above all the women on earth, and blessed be the Lord God, the Creator of heaven and earth. You will be praised and your name will never be forgotten by those who recall the might of God. You did not spare your own life when our nation was brought low, but have avenged our ruin, walking in the straight path before our God. A segunda leitura da carta de São Paulo aos Gálatas vai ser. The second reading will be 
read out in Italian. In it, the apostle evokes the, the mystery of the incarnation and how Mary sent her son. A reading from the letter of St. Paul Apostle to the Galatians. Brothers, but when the time had fully come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba, Padre. Quindi... So through God, you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir. The word of the Lord. Now he's asking everyone to, to stand as the gospel will be proclaimed. It will be read out in several languages, including Portuguese, Spanish, English, and Polish. The gospel is preceded by the singing of the gospel acclamation, whose refrain is Alleluia. You are blessed, O Virgin Mary, most worthy of all praise, because from you the Son of Justice was born, Christ our God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Luca. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, while Jesus was speaking to the crowd, his mother and his brothers arrived. Someone said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside and want to talk to you. But Jesus answered the one who warned him, Who is my mother and my, who are my brothers? Pointing to the disciples, he said, These are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven, that one 
is my brother, my sister, and my mother. En aquel tiempo, mientras Jesús hablaba a las gentes, una mujer de entre el gentío levantó la voz diciendo, Dichoso el vientre que te llevó y los pechos que te criaron. Pero él repuso, Mejor, dichosos los que escuchan la palabra de Dios y la cumplen. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast at which you nursed. He replied, Rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. En ce temps-là, comme Jésus était en train de parler, une femme éleva la voix au milieu de la foule pour lui dire, « Heureuse la mère qui t'a porté en elle et dont les saints t'ont nourri. » Alors Jésus lui déclara, « Heureux plutôt ceux qui écoutent la parole de Dieu et qui la gardent. » In jener Zeit, als Jesus zum Volk redete, rief eine Frau aus der Menge ihm zu, selig die Frau, deren Leib dich getragen und deren Brust dich genährt hat. Er aber erwiderte, selig sind vielmehr die, die das Wort Gottes hören und es befolgen. Verbum Domini. O Evangeliário é agora levado ao Presidente que o beija e com ele nos abençoa. Cardinal Perlin will pronounce his homily. They are inviting everyone to sit down to, to listen to the homily. Amados uh, irmãos e uh, irmãs, dear brothers and sisters, in the collect that we raised together, the collect prayer, 
They raised together to God the Father at the beginning of the solemn Eucharistic celebration. We ask to work generously for the salvation of the world and for the extension of the kingdom of Christ. We ask to be witnesses of Jesus' Easter. In fact, in his Easter, the salvation of the world is accomplished. That is the call to resurrection and the forgiveness of sins. In Easter, we find the mercy, love, and life that shape the kingdom of Christ here on earth and in the world to come. It is not by chance that the community that gathers for the Eucharistic celebration, moved by the memory and contemplation of the, of the Virgin Mary, recites that prayer. For it is the mother of Jesus herself who directs us to Easter as the culmination and source of the revelation of the identity and mission of her redeeming Son in our midst. She is the woman of faith who knows how to remain as an authentic disciple at the hour of Jesus, and also knows how to be at the hour of the church, constantly called to be reborn from the blood and water of her Savior, to come out of the countless closed cenacles in order to make him known to the world. With the strength and gifts of the Holy Spirit, the history of believers of which Fatima is both a sign and proclamation always shows us Mary solicitous and present by God's grace in the daily life of believers and in their time so that the light of Easter may enlighten minds, hearts, hands, works and days thus opening them to God's future, which is always a future of peace and hope. In the words of sacred scripture that were proclaimed, we heard resound her voice as a mother, a voice that united to that of all the saints and blessed, guides us along the paths of the mission, making us servants and cooperators of the redeeming Easter of our only Lord. In the first reading from the book of Revelation, we were reminded that history is not a progressive and inexorable distancing from God. As we might be led to believe by what we generally consider to be signs of his absence. For example, unanswered tears, continual mourning, laments caused by infidelity, betrayal, and violence. The fatigue felt in living in a city based on oppression, death that erases and silences everything and everyone. On the contrary, history is the faithful approach of us to the city of God, where everything shines with the newness that his presence and beneficial action make possible. And these are not mere consoling fantasies, without real fruit, as Christ's Easter shows us. The risen one is precisely that Jesus who was crucified, that Jesus who felt in his own body the effects of God's absence, 
accepted and sought after. That Jesus who stopped the estrangement from God, filling it with his presence and his love, carried scandalously to the point of forgiveness. That Jesus who made it possible to seek and find God where usually one does not look, that is, in the poor, in those who are in last place, in those whom the world forgets and discards. The risen one is that Jesus who makes living and dying new. Mary, his mother, is never on the side of the prophets of misfortune, but she is on the side of Christ, the God with us. And in him, Mary announces that the Father makes all things new. He, he makes us new so that we learn with the, with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to transform the stones of our demolitions into living stones that shape the Jerusalem of heaven. Sustentados per la experiencia de Judite, que nos fue lembrada en un salmo responsorial. Supported by Judith's, Judith's experience, which we were reminded of in the responsorial psalm, we then listen in the second reading to Paul's words about one born of a woman. La novedad es que la Pascua de Jesús trae el sello de humanidad. The newness that Jesus' Easter brings to the heart of humanity so that the Jerusalem of heaven draws ever closer to it is condensed in the opportunity to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the risen body of Jesus is the source from which the Spirit pours out of. For those who pronounce with conviction, like Mary, there, here I am, before the good God. It is that he wishes to realize in every person this mystery hidden for centuries, to be father, even of those who are only earth and ashes. For us, being earth and ashes becomes an occasion and a, moved, a motive to make the law of the strongest prevail. But thanks to Easter and to the gift of the Spirit, being earth and ashes can become the foundation to make room for the law of love and make the common home, which is our plundered planet, the home, the home of those who in their diversity recognize each other as brothers and sisters. Without reproducing the Cain paradigm, but according to the culture of encounter, of encounter, of reciprocal knowledge and cooperation. The Virgin Mary is both sign and witness of this law of love, inspired and sustained by the Holy Spirit that flows from the risen body of Christ, because her universal maternity does not know the walls of cultural, social, and political diversity. On the contrary, she teaches to expand the spaces of the church so that it may be the community where the harmony of differences makes useless the will of domination and sameness, but rather is at the service of which human oh sorry, at the service of which human laws are so often unjustly placed, either by complicity or cowardice. The approach of the heavenly Jerusalem and the gift of the Spirit, which Jesus' Easter unveils to us, enable us to become dreamers. This is what we heard in the Gospel. The woman who raises her voice about Jesus, from the, the woman who raises her voice about Jesus from the crowd, ascribes to him the same words that the book of Genesis 
in the Aramaic version, which is the common language in Israel at the time of Jesus, addressed to the patriarch Joseph, one of the 12 sons of Jacob. Joseph was the man of dreams, the man capable in the darkness of life of dreaming the world according to God. And for this very reason, he would become not only for his brothers and his father, but also for many people, the savior of famine and hunger. To that woman, Jesus responds by stressing three things. First, like Joseph, he too will be the savior, not only of his Israeli brothers, but also of many peoples. Second, like Joseph, he dreams the world according to God, and this in the midst of the obscurity of life. Finally, he recognizes himself indebted to his mother Mary, as it was she who taught Jesus how to dream from God in the darkness of life in order to save not only his brothers, but all people. Dear brothers and sisters, there are two words that this holy place of the Kovadairia, with its history and spirituality, proposes to us in order to conserve in our hearts, like the Virgin Mary, the awareness of the approach of humanity to the root Jerusalem of heaven the gift of the Spirit, the vocation to dream, which teaches to witness Jesus' Easter. These words are penance and prayer. Penance and prayer. Authentic penance makes us grow in a just relationship with our prayer. True prayer educates us for the encounter with the Holy Trinity. Let us ask the Lord Jesus, supported by the Holy Mother of God, that those words never leave our hearts. But thanks to them that the light and values of Christ's Easter may never be lacking to us, to this holy place, to the universal and particular church, so that the joy of the gospel may continue to be announced with zeal and humility to the whole world, to all men and women whom God loves. Amen. Credo in uno Madeum. Ave omnipotente, Marcore in Celi et Terre. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light. True God from two God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, was spoken through the prophets. And one holy Catholic Church, a uh, holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism and the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the death, dead, and the life of the world to come. Irmãos e irmãs, em Fátima, Nossa Senhora veio lembrar que Deus, na sua misericórdia... Brothers and sisters, at Fátima, Our Lady came to remind us that God, in His mercy, 
is attentive to the history of the world and of his pilgrim people. Through her intercession, let us entrust to the divine mercy our supplications for humanity and for the church singing confidently. So now there's the different intercessions in various languages and the audience replies, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us in Latin. For the Church, the people of God, for Pope Francis and the bishops of the whole world, and for all those responsible for, for the synodal process underway, that the synod may be a path of discernment and participation, faithful to the gospel, to the inspiration of the Spirit and to the challenges of the signs of the times. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary. For todos los perseguidos a causa de su fe, para que all those persecuted because of their faith that religious freedom may be respected in all nations and that religions may be at the service of mankind and in favor of peace. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary. Per la pace tra le nazioni e in ogni nazione in guerra. Per le vittime dei For peace among nations and in every nation at war. For the victims of conflict in Ukraine and in all parts of the world. That they may find relief in their suffering and resist hatred and vo violence with forgiveness and fraternity. We pray through the intercession of Mary. For the leaders of nations and international organizations, that they commit themselves to the search for path of reconciliation and peace, justice, and respect for the equal dignity of all human beings. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary. Journée mondiale de la jeunesse 2023. Pour que les jeunes du For the World Youth Day 2023, that the young people of Portugal and of the whole world who will participate may deepen their relationship with the Mother of Jesus, and that, like her, they may rise with eagerness to build a more human future. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary. Für alle, die wegen Situationen der Gewalt und der Armut For all those who have to leave their home countries because of situations of violence and poverty, that they may find hospitality and a peaceful future among the people of their new adopted country. Let us play, pray. For all pilgrims participating in this feast, that they may hear the call to conversion 
and prayer that Our Lady addresses to all hearts here and find the consolation and hope indicated by Fatima. todas as pessoas que foram vítimas de qualquer espécie de abusos no For all the people that have been victims of abuse within the church so that they can find in their life the peace, the love and the light and the hope of Christ resurrected. We pray for the intercession of Mary. Pela congregação das servas de Nossa Senhora de Fátima. For the congregation of servants of Our Lady of Fátima that celebrate the centen centennial of their birth so that they may continue to creatively serve the mission of the church throughout the world and in this shrine. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary. Escutai misericordioso, o Deus da luz e da paz, a oração. Listen mercifully, O God of light and peace, to the prayer that your pilgrim people raise to you through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Fatima. And grant will we confidently ask you through Christ our Lord. So we enter into the Liturgy of the Eucharist from the Liturgy of the Word. Uh, the altar is prepared with the Missal, which the celebrant will use for the prayers of the Mass, with the vessels, which will contain the precious body and blood of our Lord after the consecration, and with the other things that is ne are necessary in Catholic belief, the bread and the wine which are offered to God through the prayers of the offertory are received back from God as the body and blood of Christ with only the external signs of their origin as bread and wine remaining so that Christ is truly present as he said at the Last Supper, not this symbolizes my body but this is my body and this is my blood. So the prayers of the offertory will evoke that preparation for that solemn moment when Christ becomes present of the altar under two, two forms, separately consecrated body and blood, and this indicating his passion. And so the church sees this as an unbloody sacrifice offered to the Father in which we the people join, uh, we the members of that body, together with the priest who represents Christ the head to us, offer to the, to the Father through Christ in the Holy Spirit these, uh, this gift, the gift of the Son who offered himself on the cross for us, and all of our own sorrows and crosses that we bring to this altar and present uh, to the Father through Christ, through this unbloody sacrifice.
sensing the altar which represents Christ and the gifts themselves which will become Christ truly really and substantially present on the altar the incense being a sign of prayers rising up to God as we see in chapters 4 and 8 of the book of Revelation Orai, irmãos, para que o meu e o vosso sacrifício seja aceite por Deus, Pai Todo-Poderoso. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the people respond, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his church que vos ofrecemos na festa da Virgem Santa Maria, perdoai benignamente, Senhor, os nossos pecados e orientai os nossos corações no caminho da santidade e da paz. Por Cristo nosso, nosso Senhor. Dominus Bobiscum. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Sur sum corda. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Gracias agamus. Domino Deo Nostro. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. And the, the preface to the Eucharistic prayer. Señor, Pai Santo, Deus Eterno, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. It is truly our duty and our salvation to give you thanks always and everywhere and exalt your infinite goodness as we celebrate the Feast of the Blessed Virgin. Receiving your word in her immaculate heart, she merited to conceive him in her virginal womb and giving birth to the Creator of the universe and preparing the birth of the Church. Near the cross, she accepted the will of divine charity and received all men as her children, generated by the death of Christ for eternal life. She waited with the apostles, the coming of the Holy Spirit, associating herself to the prayers of the disciples, and became an admirable model of the Church in prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she assists with maternal love the Church, 
those still pilgrims on earth, mercifully protecting their steps toward their heavenly homeland while waiting for the glorious coming of the Lord. Therefore, with the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory, singing with one voice, Holy, 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 the prayer of the seraphim and given in Isaiah 6, who falling down before God, prostrating before God, sing his praises, and we join with them in praising God. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Vere sanctus es Domine, pons omnis sanctitatis, ec ergo dona quesumus spiritus tui rogus. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the narrative taken from the Gospels of the Last Supper. Taking bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples. Saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, of the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Qui pro nobis et pro multis et fundetur in remissionem peccatorum. Hoc facite in meam commemorazione.
mystery of faith in which the people give their amen to what has taken place. We announce your death, O Lord. We proclaim your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lembrai-vos, Senhor, da vossa igreja dispersa por toda a terra e tornai-a perfeita na caridade. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Lembrai-vos também dos nossos irmãos e irmãs que adormeceram na esperança da ressurreição e de todos aqueles que na vossa misericórdia partiram deste mundo. Admiti-os na luz da vossa presença. Tende Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. São José, seu esposo, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through Christ our Lord. Omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, who in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. All are asked to join in praying of the Our Father. Fies aue ensinamentos du Salvador, usamos dizer cantando. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In quanto esperamos a vinda gloriosa de Jesus Cristo, nosso Salvador. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
che disseste aus vossos apostolos, deixo vos a paz. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Vos che viveis e reinais per lo seculos dos seculos. Pax Domini, sit semper vobiscum. Saudai-vos na paz de Cristo. Now the people exchange and the celebrants, concelebrants exchange the, the kiss of peace, symbolizing their union in reconciliation and in peace before God as they prepare to receive God in the most blessed sacrament. of St. John the Baptist. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Felices os convidados para a ceia do Senhor, eis o Cordeiro de Deus, que tira o pecado do mundo. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The response, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. many uh, clergy who are ordinary ministers of Holy Communion prepare to distribute it as well as uh, clearly some extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion doing that task as well. 
and is in, uh, typical in uh, Portugal, and you see this elsewhere as well. The umbrella is used to uh, shield the minister of communion and, and the sacred species. Uh, the covering over the altar symbol similarly uh, is used in churches for that purpose as well as a symbol of what the holy thing that is is present there shrine from the Capolino on the left, the colonnades running from the little hospital over to the basilica. The basilica itself, which uh, beginning construction in the 1930s, I believe, was completed in the 1950s. And today inside is can be found the bodies of Saints Jacinta and Francisca the two younger children who were canonized first in 2000, and the servant of God, Lucia, uh, generally known in America as Sister Lucy, who for until 2005 was in the convent in Coimbra, the Carmelite convent there, and continued uh, in her mystical contacts with Our Lady and also with Our Lord, uh, as is clear from what is preserved of those uh, mystical revelations to her and the explanations of the message of Fatima in particular a book that she put together called the calls from the message of Fatima which goes through uh, the many elements of it and explains their relationship and the importance uh, of those uh, things of those different elements and it's also uh, important to know that while there are many arguments about the details of the message, I think all are in agreement about the important elements. And he was confirmed in an interview which Sister Lucia had with uh, Father Howard Rafferty, an American Carmelite who was responsible for the propagation of the scapular uh, in the United States in the 1950s. And he went over and he spoke to her. And the distillation of their conversation is that there are five pillars of the message of Fatima to say the rosary daily and of course the rosary can be conceived as five decades of joyful mysteries or five of the sorrowful or five of the glorious and Pope John Paul II added the luminous so really 20 decades but the term used in Portuguese by Our Lady is for the five decades so to say a rosary daily of five decades to do penance, especially to offer the sacrifices of one's daily life. And our Lord expanded on this to Sister Lucia in 1945, that the penance that is desired is that each person offers the sacrifices of our daily life. Meaning the crosses which come with our vocation, single, for example, to remain chaste until marriage. Married life, to be remain chaste within marriage in the religious life and the priesthood with the promises of celibacy or vows of virginity or celibacy to remain faithful to that and then the duties which obedience to the will of God and the obedience to the church and and those who have uh, the right to expect our obedience uh, children their parents all of these things lay crosses on us and if we carry them it's not necessary to do grand uh, great and grand pilgrimages. It is enough to do well the duties of one's state in life, was, as the Lord explained to Sister Lucia in 1945. To make communions of reparation on First Saturday, which she explicitly mentioned by preview in the apparitions in 1917, and then came later to Sister Lucia in the convent and explained to her what that means 
on five consecutive Saturdays to make reparation uh, to the regarding the five ways in which she herself is offended. And in doing making this request, she said her son, our Lord, asked for this reparation to be made. And the broader reparation, of course, for the sins of the world, which bring about the violence, the wars, and poverty, and all the other things uh, which inflict the human race. Reparation for all of those sins, which by the consequence of doing them or the way we live, bring about the penalty of those sins or which uh, by God's toleration allows even greater calamities to befall, such as war and pestilence and so on. The fourth one, consecration to Our Lady. Uh, so that means to give ourselves in consecration to her, to, to dedicate ourselves to her, to become her disciple, to imitate her, and in this way, imitate the one who was the principal and first disciple of the Savior and who best served him in a life of holiness and prayer and sacrifice herself of fidelity to duty. And so Mary becomes the way to Jesus for us in consecrating ourselves places us under her stewardship and that becomes a bond which we owe have an obligation to her and she of course then is obliged also to help us on the way of holiness and it's interesting on this point that Our Lady appeared in Portugal and not some other country in Portugal developed early a great devotion to Our Lady to her Immaculate Conception and her other mysteries even before they were declared a dogma of the church uh, and so that history is quite quite interesting and this is shown through the Middle Ages in the communities that were founded there such as the Canons Regular of the Holy Cross uh, in Coimbra uh, founded by Saint Theotonius and so it's also shown by the fact that under the tutelage of uh, of the Canons Regulars and also the Franciscans that King Joao VI in 1646 consecrated his crown to the Blessed Virgin Mary, making her the Queen of Portugal perpetually. And every every queen did the same, th or every king did the same. And so this practice survived until a government, an anti-Catholic government, anti-Christian government in the 1830s suppressed many of the practices in the church, dissolved the monasteries, and set about a persecution of the church. And in that classic Warner Brothers film, Our the Miracle of Our Lady of Fatima, you see how even in the 1910s, uh, that was already still continuing. Uh, and so this country so dedicated to the faith and to Our Lady was suffering so greatly uh, from that time. But this idea of consecration to Mary was previewed there in the, by the King of Portugal. And of course today, we see it being used as a means of approaching God through Mary by nations, by the popes throughout the world. And it was said in the 1950s by uh, one of the great Mariologists of the time that this was the th this is what was accomplished is that consecration became a new instrument of the church uh, and so that distant example of the kings of Portugal uh, and certainly the message of Fatima which calls for consecration uh, are represented by by that as well so that was the fourth point consecration to Our Lady and the final one connected with that was wearing the scapular and this was a point of dispute which brought him to Portugal and he wanted specifically to say. And Sister Lucy's answer was, well, I've been saying this all these years as well and Our Lady has never rebuked me. After all, she appeared as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And so this uh, Sister Lucy herself understood was an integral part of the message of Fatima, wearing the sca brown scapular of Mount Carmel uh, as a sign of consecration. So internally, spiritually, the consecration, but externally, these little signs like wearing the scapular is a way of showing to others uh, that devotion that you have to Our Lady and her role at the side of our son, her son in the mystery of salvation. 
o santuário propôs como tema de meditação so in preparation as, uh, for the World Youth Day the sanctuary proposes as an intention pela relação cada vez mais estreita com Maria to grow spiritually within a relationship closer to, to Mary so that we can become with her again and become like her again and, and spread her light across the world and in relations with others. She, she welcomed the gifts of, of God and so let us also receive these gifts that we receive in the Eucharist. And so now they will sing uh, a hymn that exactly speaks about this joy of accepting the gifts from God.
this hymn is singing, Happy are those invited to the Supper of the Lord. Na sua mensagem para a Jornada Mundial da Juventude, o Papa Francisco, in his message for the World Youth Day, Pope Francis said that the mother of Jesus is an example for for young people, so that they're not still in front of of the mirror, you know, and they're not alienated. She is projected towards the exterior, towards other people, and so that's an example for young people to encourage them to go outside of themselves and go towards other people and to be an example in the light of God. Também a Eucaristia nos projeta para sairmos ao encontro dos irmãos. The, the Eucharist also projects us to, to and encourages us to go out towards the, the others and to encourage them to have a better life. So remembering the words of Jesus and we welcome, welcome him. We're remembering the words of Jesus and welcoming him in the faith. They're now going to sing another hymn, hymn that says, um, I came so that all can have life. So this is an introduction to the hymn, which we'll keep playing as, a, as the participants receive communion.
see the sick brought in uh, from the little hospital area. They're here for the Mass. And after the Mass, there will be benediction of the Blessed Sacrament when uh, I presume it will be Cardinal uh, Perlin will uh, be exposed Eucharist and a monstrance, the uh, vessel that uh, contains the exposed Eucharist will come over there and bless the sick. And there have been uh, cases of miracles uh, occurring through that blessing, even through television. So uh, if you are sick or were your family members, uh, certainly ask the intercession uh, of the Blessed uh, Virgin Mary, Our Lady of the Rosary of Fatima, to relieve you of it or to give you the strength to endure it as the Lord wills. Como a Mãe do Céu, temos muitos motivos para dar louvor a Deus. Mesmo like the Mother of God, we have many reasons to worship God, even in troubled periods like the one we are living in right now. But if we keep faith, confidence, and hope that God conducts the world, it'll be okay. And we can pray for Pope Francis that he, he can lead the church and that we can pray for the young people so that they can prepare for the World Youth Day in Lisbon. We pray for the synodal way of the church so that it can bring discernment. They can bring discernment uh, from the Holy Spirit about the ways which we have to partake. So now, in all of this, we will sing the Magnificat dedicated to Mary.
Concedei, Señor, que el sacramento que recebemos conduza a vida eterna a aquellos que proclaman a Virgen Santa María. Grant, Lord, that the sacrament which we received leads to eternal life those who proclaim the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through our Lord, through our Lord Jesus Christ. O Santíssimo Sacramento, e se deu a nós em, na comunhão, continua conosco por este meio inaudito. Ele Christ, who made um himself sabiente, body through the Eucharist, please continue with us. And Adorando each of us pr will, pr will manifest the love for those who suffer by singing the hymn, My God, I Believe. This is a beautiful little hymn which repeats the words which were taught uh, by the angel to the children uh, the year before the apparitions in in the Covadoria, the angel appeared to them and obviously preparing them for something greater and taught them to, before the Holy Eucharist, to pray, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you, Lord, and I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. It's a beautiful little prayer, easily said at the time of the elevation of the Eucharist in the Mass. hope and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. Querido irmão e querida irmã que te encontras doente. Dear suffering brothers and sisters who are sick. Jesus presente na Eucaristia. In this moment in front of Jesus Christ presented present, present in the Eucharist. Rezamos gave his, his body for us. Que pode curar we pray together before this so that he can heal not only our bodies but also our souls. Contemplar Jesus na cruz e na Eucaristia. Contemplating Christ on the cross and in the Eucharist. Contemplar from a chair or from a wheelchair. Física e psicológica da solidão, do sentimento the, the physical and psychological pain, the sense of loneliness or of abandonment, the feeling of powerlessness. We contemplate from this kind of condition. So maybe it will bring a different perspective on, on what happened to Christ also when he offered himself for us on the cross and when he does the same during the Eucharist. Na sua you, you were next to him, you were close to him in his passion and your suffering and your suffering, the things that the, the, the medicine can't take away physically, it will never be invisible in front, it will never be invisible in the eyes of God and it will never be useless in the history of salvation. 
offended. The words of Pope Francis in these situ situations of, of illness, even though it is a it is a trial, it also shows a positive force. Not because it shows uh, illness and uh, tribulation as something small, but it gives us a key to to be able to discover the profound sense of what we are living. A key that helps us see how illness and sickness can be a way to, to get closer to Christ that always walks but uh, close to us carrying his cross. And this key is given to us to Mary, who is also always on this journey. Dear sick brother and sister, you are not alone in this path. You have a mother, Mary, who, inter who intervenes for you with, with her father. You also have a community who contemplates with you, Jesus, in the Eucharist. And you have to believe that that is a source of consolation and peace. The Italian bishop, Don Tonino Bello, as a victim of cancer, and who is now in the process of being, of possibly being beatified, he saw a crucifix that read, Temporary, uh, temporary placement. Penso não haver fórmula melhor para definir a. Don Tonino thought temporary placement. There is not a better way to describe the cross, mine, yours, and that of Christ. A cruz, o Gólgota, não é morada de ninguém. É provisória. Tem um início. The cross is not. Is, is temporary. It has a beginning and an end. And after it, there is the glory of the resurrection. The seers of Fatima, they live this way. They're part of the cross. In the, knowing that the darkness of the times were temporary. For Francisco and Jacinta, their time was really short. And for Lucia, for Lucy, her time was a bit longer. And her words are really important. And th they were all included in 98 years of life. We are also here for some time still. The fundamental question is not whether it will be long or a short time here, or whether it will be a time of suffering or not, but how we decide to live it. There's always a precious time there's always a precious time, the time that we have here, so that we can write the story that we, we want with the tools that we have disposable. The children were able to write a story of mercy, even if they had a short time here. They were able to keep their sight straight on Christ, guided by Mary, who brought, who brought herself as a refuge for them. The temporary suffering and sacrifices, they all passed. But the love that they, that with the love that they loved uh, Jesus and Mary, stayed for all the faithful and the sinners of the church. And this stays today still and continues. And it continues also in her, her, her presence and intercession.
how the sick will be blessed as he makes a sign of the cross over them and it is Christ himself that is blessing not the priest not the bishop not the cardinal not the pope but Christ himself in this Eucharistic blessing and so interestingly in many of the Marian shrines whether it's Lourdes or Fatima or uh, the Holy House of Loreto miracles of healing often occur in the in the time of the Eucharistic blessing pointing again as we have throughout the program today to the centrality of Christ and Mary Mary pointing us to Christ and that it is Christ working through her uh, as in the apparition itself the light of God came through Our Lady onto the children and into the earth even uh, but she was simply the instrument the vessel through which it passed Como outrora os doentes clamavam a Jesus, invoquemos também nós hoje a sua misericórdia. Like it before the sick called to Jesus, let's also invoke him this today by saying, God have mercy on me. Senhor, diz uma só palavra e eu serei curado. God, say only one word and I will be healed. Senhor, aquele que amas está doente. God, those who, you, those who you love are sick. Senhor, socorre-me que pereço. God, please save me. Senhor, eu creio, mas ajuda a minha pouca fé. God, I believe, but please help my small faith.
Em silêncio, adoremos o Senhor aqui presente. Now they're inviting the audience to, to adore in silence. Quem puderem, ajoelhe-se ou incline-se para receber a bênção do Santíssimo Sacramento. They're inviting to kneel for the, to receive the, the blessing. beautiful Eucharistic hymn written by St. Thomas Aquinas down in adoration falling lo the sacred host we hail lo or ancient forms departing newer rites of grace prevail faith for all defects supplying where the feeble senses fail To the everlasting Father and the Son who reigns on high, with the Spirit blessed for proceeding forth from me eternally, be salvation, honor, blessing, might, and endless majesty. Qui nobis sub sacramento mirabili, passionis tue memoriam reliquis. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you want for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Aclamemos a uma só voz. Bendito seja Deus. Bendito o seu santo nome. Bendito Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. 
Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Bispo Dom José Ornelas entrega a cruz e o ícone da Jornada. So now the Bishop José Ornelas Carvalho, he will give the cross and the icon of the World Youth Day to the to the youth there from Fátima to send them off on this journey to World Youth Day. So there he is being shown. Queridos jovens, queridos e queridas, amigos e amigas. Dear young people, friends. De Jesus, que já Here is the cross of Christ that has gone all over the world. Fátima, e And today it's here in our diocese of Leira Fátima, in the Cova de Iria. You've already brought it across many communities and institutions. But today you will bring it here through the land of Fátima and through this church. Receive this cross and the icon of Our Lady, symbol of the World Youth Day. Invite everyone to the World Youth Day in Lisbon and continue the bringing the light of God through Mary. Oh, to all the young people and to all the young people and populations. You are being sent. And you young people of this diocese, you should also feel like you're being sent. I remember all the ones before you who have also been sent and have also brought these icons of the World Youth Day and those who will also bring them in the future. God bless you. God bless you in this journey of bringing these icons to the World Youth Day. Now that what's playing is the, is the hymn that they've written for World Youth Day.
so the hymn says everyone will hear our voice let's live let's lift our arms and sing loudly O Sr. Bispo de Leiria Fátima vai agora benzer os objetos religiosos que tentes convosco. Now the bishop he will bless the objects that have been brought. E quero começar antes de mais por dizer uma palavra sobre o gesto que agora realizamos. Um gesto simbólico. He wants to say some words about the, the actions that we have taken, the symbolic actions. E vai ser certamente para aquelas que as duas que ainda vão about receiving these icons and then the dioceses that will still in the future receive them. Everything in the end converges to Lisbon, to Lisbon where the World Youth Day will take place. Esta ligação entre este santuário, a jornada, the connection between this sanctuary, the shrine, and the World Youth Days to unite all the youth is very symbolic. Aqui, como peregrinos. It's very symbolic in representing what this shrine means. Fui encontrando grupos de peregrinos. In the previous days, he's been meeting groups of pilgrims. Each person is bringing their suffering, their dreams, their tears. The problems that have been resolved or want to be resolved. Each one of us walks with his own cross. It's the image of what we do at the World Youth Days. We walk integrating our, our issues, our problems with the cross of Christ. And, but we also feel the care of the mother who always welcomes us in even the situations that are the hardest, even in the moment of death. This is what we're celebrating. Fatima is a link to Christ. It's a link to the church. And this is what we're doing here. To look, we're, do, we're looking here for the same attitude as Mary, to look for new paths for the church and for the, and for the world, which in these times really needs it. Here, we're united here to pray for this, but also to assume this attitude that, signify, that is signified in this pilgrimage. Mary arose with haste, which is the theme of the World Youth Day. He's citing it and encouraging to, to, to go to, to go with haste towards Lisbon, where World Youth Day will take place. Rise with haste, because the time is is short. They need more. We need more. Um, more people to to help out, to do service. Families to welcome the pilgrims. To volunteer. So to celebrate this youth that follows Christ. And Mary is, is here to help us understand this haste that she has to go meet Christ. Leaving here Fatima to bring exactly this kind of attitude to the World Youth Day. As a church as well, to bring, have this haste to bring Christ to the world and to bring fraternity and priests to the world, which is really needed. Just a, f a few words in English. I will not use other languages today, not to make it too long. But a few words just to say what we just uh, made here with the, the, the signs of the, the Youth Day that will take place in Lisbon in, in the month of August. We are here in Fatima, and Fatima and Mary that we are here because of her. This is, is a symbolic of Mary begin, uh, means for the entire church. 
She is the mother of God. It took, she took care of him. She made him grow up in liberty. And especially, she, she taught him the taking care of the most fragile of the humanity. He came for that. That's our, our goal, too. Uh, welcoming the young people from around the world. We will pass through her, and Fatima will be always a link to Christ, but a link also to make together the Church of Jesus, and together as missionaries of the gospel that the, the world needs for becoming a better world for every man and woman in this world. God bless you and let you bring this good news for, the, for your houses, for your homes, in your trips, and let them bless you and all your families. Mas também uma palavra de agradecimento. Antes de mais, ao Sr. Cardeal Pietro Parolin. He also wants to say thank you to Cardinal Pietro Parolin, which echoes and represents the Pope, the Pope and all the Church. So thank you, Cardinal Pietro Parolin, for your presence and your words, and for these dreams that can help us bring a Church and create a Church more open, more in solidarity, and that promotes priests peace and the, you, and the gospel. Muito obrigado aos outros bispos que estão aqui presentes. Thank you also to the other bishops that are here present from Portugal and other places in the world. Thank you also to the pilgrims. Coming here from different parts of the world. May the Lord bless you. And uh, especialmente aqueles que vieram a pé. And thank you especially to those who, who walked here. Que no seu caminhar nos dizem o que deve ser a igreja. Uma igreja que não para. In your walking, you represent what the church should be. A church that doesn't stop. That walks through all the paths of the world and of the culture and of the new world that it is being born with many issues, but also many opportunities. Mary can lead us on this pilgrimage. And also the last word is for the, the youngest. The, the mother of God came to, to take care of these three children. And so that is our function as well, to, to pray for the smallest, the youngest. And for you that are growing, don't forget that you're, you have a true father and a mother in, in heaven. Even in our suffering, even if we're having a lot of problems, Mary, our mother, and, our God, and God, our father, can always accompany us. So bring with you this joy and this certainty. Never forget it. Like Jacinta and Francisco also did. God bless us all. And I will bless all the objects that you have brought. But before enter your heart and consecrate yourself to the to the example of Mary. E agora vou abençoar os vossos objetos religiosos. Now we'll, I will bless your religious objects. Faccio ora la benedizione degli oggetti religiosi. Ora vanno a ser bendecidos los objetos religiosos que tengan ustedes. Je vais maintenant bénir les objets religieux. Ich werde nun die religiösen Andenken segnen. Teraz, po Bogosławiem, 
Devocionalia. Oremos. Bendito sejais, Senhor, fonte e origem de todas as bênçãos, que sempre promoveis a piedade sincera dos vossos fiéis. Por intercessão da bem-aventurada Virgem Maria, dos santos Francisco e Jacinta Marto, assisti benignamente os vossos servos e fazei que, levando consigo estes símbolos de fé e de piedade, se vão transformando à imagem do vosso Filho, Ele que é Deus e convosco vive e reina na unidade do Espírito Santo pelos séculos dos séculos. Amém. E então agora desejo a todos uma boa viagem e uma, uma viagem segura para as vossas casas e também... A... Now I wish you all a safe trip, a safe trip back home and also to have a good lunch. witnessing the beautiful celebration of the solemnity of Our Lady of the Rosary of Fatima from Fatima, Portugal, um, the location of the apparitions of Our Lady in 1917. And these are always wonderful celebrations. Here's a little girl anticipating the usual adeus to the Blessed Mother, which from the very beginning as Our Lady departed and the children pointed in the direction of the east where she went. People took out their handkerchiefs and waved them, and shortly the statue of Our Lady of Fatima will be carried back to the Capolinia. We, on the other hand, will go out for our mass coverage. Here we are with the Adeus and the, the great singing of the song Adeus, which is so beautiful.
Thank you to tuning in to our coverage. Uh, this program will be re-aired at 5 p.m. Eastern Time in the United States and Canada. Uh, for those uh, who perhaps did not see it, that you could tell about that re-air. Uh, I've been uh, very grateful to be with you today. I'm Colin Donovan, Vice President for Theology at EWTN, and I've been joined by Isabella de Cavallo, based in Rome, to do our uh, very able translation from the Portuguese. We appreciate you watching EWTN. And uh, until the next time in October, God bless. Thank you, Colin, and thank you for thank you from Rome to everyone who who joined us in watching this celebration. Thank you, Isabella. It's been a, pre a pleasure. Steve, how do you handle the inevitable personal attacks? You're trying to debate the issues with somebody and they're calling you names and insulting you. Like uh, I'm a misogynist? Well, I tell these people that I just won't respond to personal attacks. I say, if you'd actually like to debate the real issues related to abortion, I'd love to discuss them with you. And I promise not to attack you personally. But if your best defense of abortion is simply to 